Icarus at the Edge of Time is a retelling of the classical myth of Icarus, but this time a boy, rather than having wax wings and going near the sun, takes a spaceship and flies near a black hole. And the point of this reworking of the story is to take a small nugget of science, a piece of something known as general relativity, and allow it to be experienced by the reader through the power of a story, through the power of narrative. You don't have to study, you don't have to take exams, you just have to allow the story to wash over you. And the weird, wonderful features of science, revealed in this case by Albert Einstein, can just be taken in viscerally. Icarus, the, the main character of the story, is a young 14-year-old kid who has that inner sense that there's more to life than what he sees immediately around him. And he has this rebellious spirit, this willingness to go into the unknown regardless of the consequences. And his dad tells him that he shouldn't go near a black hole. That's where he wants to go, but he knows better. He has studied the physics of black holes and has this urge to do something that nobody's ever done before, venture out to a black hole. And the thing is, he is a smart kid. He does know a lot. He's actually built the engine for this ship, the warp drive, and he goes to the black hole. And he does survive just as he thought that he would. But as often is the case, he doesn't know everything. He knows a lot, but not everything. And when he returns, he realized that there was a key feature about the science of black holes, the physics that takes place near a black hole that he didn't take fully into account. So when he returns, he finds that the world has profoundly changed. The book was designed by Chip Kidd, and I think he did a really, a really great job. When we first discussed the story, the one thing that we were certain about was we didn't want the imagery to be literal to have a boy and a ship going near a black hole. Rather, we wanted to create the atmosphere of space, the atmosphere of a journey into the cosmos. And as he realized, how better to do that than to take real images of the universe from the Hubble Space Telescope and to doctor them in a very simple way that reflects the journey to the black hole and back. And when you open the book, you know, it's 34 pages, it's not long, it's printed on boards, it really gives you a sense of being out there in the universe. I think it would be wonderful if kids take in this book, at first maybe when they're young, even five, six, seven years old, just take it in as an adventure story of a, of a young kid flying out to the edge of a black hole, and then later on perhaps can return to the book when they're older, maybe eight, nine, ten, eleven, where they can begin to really puzzle through the strange twist that happens at the end of the story, a twist that really comes from the insights of Albert Einstein. And even perhaps, you know, older readers too can just find the story a compelling way in a very short number of pages to recognize the powerful impact of what Einstein found so long ago.